Kate Hardcastle, retail analyst at Insight with Passion. Hello, Kate. Hi, good morning. Um, right, is this about catalogues or is this about Littlewoods? Well, I think it's both, actually. It's really interesting because if you look at the Littlewoods model and speaking to some of their consumers and, and understanding the catalogue industry a few years ago, they, there was this step change where what they did is really understand the fact that they offer credit and credit offered opportunities for people to buy items. But what they really realised was that the consumers, even though they might not be able to afford the big brand names and the luxury goods, were still aspirational and wanted those goods. So Littlewoods and their sister uh, company, Very, etc., they've done that. They've allowed people to access the luxury sunglasses, the brand, luxury brands like French Connection and things, and made them accessible. So that's definitely part of the success model, and that's nothing to do is with this, the catalogue side Is it a success side model, Kate? Because if they're getting rid of the catalogue, doesn't, that doesn't sound hugely successful. Or are they now basically an online business? So the people and the customers that want that are very much technology-based customers. They have the latest smartphones, they're using the computers and the iPads, and they don't need a huge tome arriving that used to be iconic, that used to be you know something that everyone got excited about, see what the latest products were, buy your flares from there or your shell suits. That was very popular and sold out at one point. Um, and, and they use technology instead. So also the, the side of the business where agency staff used to go around, deliver your catalogues and then collect your order, has also disappeared. And, Everything's moved online too. And yet, and yet, and yet, Kate, the next directory is going at gangbusters. It profits up from that, and Argos had to bring its catalogue back. So are we a bit too quick to uh, to bury the catalogue? No, I think it's a li- well, I don't think it's the end of the catalogue, definitely not. Next is a multi-channel organisation and they or, you know, offer this quick turnaround, quick delivery and they need the catalogue at home to be able to facilitate that multi-channel. Argos is different. You know what you use your Argos for. You need to plug in a new television and it needs a widget and you go, right, where am I going to get this widget from? And you check your Argos catalogue. Or the kids that used to use the Argos catalogue to you know, go through at Christmas and decide how extensive a Christmas list they've got. So I think that was quite iconic and I think that was a different move but, of Argos but so, see where they brought them back. But they're so unwieldy, these catalogues. I mean, the cost of production, you have to all those toothy models, you know, for, for sunglasses even. You know, it's the cost of hiring them, it's the cost of photography, it's the cost of printing. It's a big lump of cost stuck right in the middle of your accounts. You're absolutely right, and that's what they've looked at. I mean, is you've still got the production cost, you still have the photography, and what you know technology allows us is videos and interaction and almost a digital dialogue for the young people to talk about products, share products online. But that huge amount of and you can only tell how much something was with how many you produced, but still pounds per unit to produce a massive term of a catalogue is something that anyone's going to want off the balance sheet if they can get rid of it. I know some of their consumers who are more established, maybe those who bought their first TVs in 1952. I'm very excited about it. We'll be sad to see the loss. But, you know, Littlewoods ditched their shops years ago. So this is, for me, was something that was going to come. Always good to speak to you, Kate. Thank you very much. That's Kate Hardcastle from Inside with Passion.